Carol Turley. I'm standing here on the south coast of England because of these amazing cliffs. They're made up of the skeletons of tiny marine organisms and they tell part of the tale of the thing that I'm really concerned about and that's ocean acidification. Oceans are taking up 25% of the carbon dioxide that we've admitted to the atmosphere. When you add CO2 to seawater, you form carbonic acid. Ocean acidification has increased by about 30% since the Industrial Revolution. On average, each person on this planet produces about four kilograms of carbon dioxide per day that goes into the oceans. Ocean acidification is the silent storm. You can't hear it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it. But scientists around the world can measure it on oceanographic long-term stations. And over the last 30 years, they've been able to monitor a decline in ocean pH. As it declines, acidity in the ocean is increasing. It's the speed of change of ocean acidification is what we're really concerned about. If we look at the geological records, such as we can see in the cliffs behind me, with all these microscopic marine organisms and their little skeletons, there are similar records under the ocean in the marine sediments. And 55 million years ago, all these little shells disappeared. So the ocean sediments went from white to red clay. And this was an acidification event that happened far slower. What's happening today is 10 times faster than what happened back then. It took thousands of years for the marine environment to recover back then. So on the current pathway that we're on, ocean acidification will increase by 100 to 150 percent by the end of this century. So what's happening around the ocean? The ocean is massive. It covers 70 percent of planet Earth. It's what makes Earth different. In the polar areas that are colder, ocean acidification is faster. It's more intensive and will become corrosive to marine organisms in the next couple of decades. The concentration of aragonite are decreasing too. Aragonite is a form of calcium carbonate, which is the chalk-like substance that organisms use to build their shells. In the Southern Ocean, down in the Antarctic, scientists have actually measured living organisms with corroding shells. Scientists around the world have been examining the impact of ocean acidification on marine organisms. And they've come up with a list of vulnerable organisms. Ocean acidification will impact organisms differently. For example, corals and other calcifiers will be impacted quite strongly, whereas other things like seagrasses will probably do well. But marine ecosystems will change, and that's a real concern because humans depend on marine ecosystems. One of the things we are able to do is look at certain areas around the world where carbon dioxide comes through the seabed through volcanic action, creating carbon dioxide vents. What we see is that biodiversity decreases and calcifiers disappear or are greatly reduced. So this supports the evidence of experimental work that ocean acidification will impact marine ecosystems. Of course, if ecosystems are impacted, then the things that depend on the ecosystems, such as fish, may be impacted too. Additionally, the larvae of coral reef fish have been shown to be disorientated. The added CO2 is affecting their neural pathways, so they're maybe more susceptible to predators. So there are all these strange effects on creatures that human beings depend on. These mussels are a really important part of feeding the world's populations. One billion people out of the seven billion people on the planet depend on marine protein as their sole protein source. The intensity of ocean acidification depends on every one of us. We are at a point in time where the human race can decide whether to keep on emitting CO2 that the way we're doing now. This is the business as usual scenario. Or we can make deep cuts in the CO2 that we emit. And if we do this and we do it rapidly, we will reduce the impacts of ocean acidification. 
So we know that ocean acidification is happening now. It's happening amazingly rapidly. It's caused by CO2 emissions to the atmosphere. It could affect every one of us on the planet, as well as all the organisms in the sea. And it's time to act now.